welcome to Daily Prayer, a ministry of the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We'll be here with you every day throughout the COVID-19 emergency. I'm Pastor Bob Schaefer. It's good to see you. Today is Sunday, July 12th, proper 10. Let's take a moment of silence now as we begin. We begin with a lighted candle. A candle burning in the darkness is a powerful symbol of hope. We light this candle as a sign of our strong hope that God is with us no matter what comes. The candle also reminds us that Jesus said we would be lights for the world. We're called to live generously and graciously, taking care of one another in the name of Jesus. Please join me if you'd like in lighting a candle in your own home now. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we turn to the words of Holy Scripture. We begin today with a word from the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter. The rain and snow fall from the sky and do not return, but instead water the earth and make it produce and yield crops and provide seed for the planter and food for those who must eat. In the same way, the promise that I make does not return to me having accomplished nothing. No, it is realized as I desire and is fulfilled as I intend. Indeed, you will go out with joy you will be led along in peace. The mountains and hills will give a joyful shout before you, and all the trees in the field will clap their hands. Evergreens will grow in place of thorn bushes. Firs will grow in place of nettles. They will be a monument to the Lord, a permanent reminder that will remain. Our psalm today is Psalm 65. Praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. Vows made to you are fulfilled. You hear prayers. All people approach you. Our record of sins overwhelms me, but you forgive our acts of rebellion. How blessed is the one whom you choose and allow to live in your palace courts. May we be satisfied with the good things of your house your holy place. You answer our prayers by performing awesome acts of deliverance, O God, our Savior. All the ends of the earth trust in you, as well as those living across the wide seas. You created the mountains by your power and demonstrated your strength. You calm the raging seas and their roaring waves, as well as the commotion made by the nations. Even those living in the most remote areas are awestruck by your acts. You cause those living in the east and west to praise you. You visit the earth and give it rain. You make it rich and fertile, with overflowing streams full of water. You provide grain for them, for you prepare the earth to yield its crops. You saturate its furrows and soak its plowed ground. With rain showers, you soften its soil and make its crops grow. You crown the year with your good blessings, and you leave abundance in your wake. The pastures in the wilderness glisten with moisture, and the hills are clothed with joy. The meadows are clothed with sheep, and the valleys are covered with grain. They shout joyfully, yes, they sing. Now we turn to the letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the life-giving spirit in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law could not do because it was weakened through the flesh. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and concerning sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, 
so that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh have their outlook shaped by things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit have their outlook shaped by the things of the Spirit. For the outlook of the flesh is death, but the outlook of the Spirit is life and peace. Because the outlook of the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to the law of God, nor is it able to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, this person does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is your life because of righteousness. Moreover, if the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will also make your mortal bodies alive through his Spirit who lives in you. And finally, in the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. On that day, after Jesus went out of the house, he sat by the lake, and such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat to sit while the whole crowd stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly because the soil was not deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched, and because they did not have sufficient root, they withered. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and they grew up and choked them. But other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundred times, as much and some sixty and some thirty. The one who has ears had better listen. So, listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches what is sown in his heart. This is the seed that was sown along the path. The seed sown on rocky ground is the person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. But he has no root in himself and does not endure. When trouble or persecution comes because of the world, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the person who hears the word, but the worldly cares and the seductiveness of wealth choke the word, so it produces nothing. But as for the seed sown on good soil, this is the person who hears the word and understands. He bears fruit, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now that we've been refreshed by God's word, let's take some time to pray together. I'd like to invite you to pray out loud with me. Please don't be embarrassed that you're praying with a video screen. I'm praying all by myself in a room. And yet, despite the strangeness, our technology is joining us in prayer right now, no matter when and where we are. So in that spirit, let's pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Almighty and merciful God, you are the only source of health and healing. You alone can bring calmness and peace. Grant to all of our neighbors who are ill an awareness of your presence and a strong confidence in you. In their pain, weariness, and anxiety, surround them with your care. Protect them by your loving might and grant to them once again the gifts of health and strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of earth and air, water and fire, height and depth, we pray for those who work in danger, who rush in to bring hope and help and comfort when others flee to safety, whose mission is to seek and save, serve and protect, and whose presence embodies the protection of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Give them caution and concern for one another, so that in safety they may do what must be done under your watchful eye. Support them in their courage and dedication, that they may continue to save lives, ease pain, and mend the torn fabric of lives and social order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, support and strengthen all those who reach out in love, concern, and prayer for the sick and distressed. In their acts of compassion, may they know that they are your instruments. In their concerns and fears, may they know your peace. In their faithful serving, may they know your steadfast love. May they not grow weary or faint-hearted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, in the stillness of our souls, we listen for your voice to know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you are near us, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. Then take us by the hand into each day that lies ahead. For where you lead, we can confidently go with Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Each day I like to share with you one good thing, a bit of hopeful news, a moment of beauty, a tip to help you through the day. And as always on Sundays, it's good to sing together. Our Good Shepherd Lutheran virtual choir is growing, and we're pleased to lead you in the uplifting hymn, For the Fruit of All Creation. The words are on the screen, so you can sing along.
If you enjoyed that hymn, you can find it anytime on our YouTube channel. Thanks as always to our talented musicians for sharing their gifts. And that's one good thing for today. Do you have a good thing that you'd like to share with the world? Send us your photos and videos by going to bit.ly slash mygoodthing and share your tips and stories with at Pastor Schaefer on Twitter. I can't wait to hear from you. That'll do it for now. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with us today. We hope it's been a blessing. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tell your friends about us. Stop by and visit us online at goodshepherdlife.org, and please consider making a gift to support our ongoing ministry. You'll find our PayPal address on the screen and in your program notes. Stay well, be of good cheer, and be kind to one another. I'll see you tomorrow 